The Descartes rule of science states that the variation of signs in a polynomial will help you determine the number of positive and negative roots it has. This will also help you find out if the polynomial has any irrational or imaginary roots. Remember the term variation of signs means the times when the sign of a term is different from the succeeding term. Here's an example. f of x equals x squared minus 6x minus 7. This polynomial has one variation of signs. x squared is positive while minus 6x is negative, which means there is exactly one positive root. Had there been two, the first two possibilities would be that it had two positive roots or none. Because the rule states that you find other possibilities by subtracting a multiple of two to the number of variations. Now, some of you may be asking why we don't have negative numbers. The most practical answer would be that you are only allowed to use counting numbers because you cannot have a negative quantity. Now we have to look for the negative of this polynomial. To do that, we use negative x instead of x. So it will become f of negative x equals negative x squared minus 6 times negative x minus 7. This can be simplified into the polynomial x squared plus 6x minus 7, which also has just one variation, which is between positive 6x and negative 7. This means that it also only has one negative root. Considering the fact that there should only be two roots, this situation is most plausible and can be tested with the integral zeros theorem. By looking for the factors of the constant 7, we can find possible rational roots. The only factors of 7 are positive and negative 1 and positive and negative 7. Using trial and error and synthetic division, we can find the roots which are positive 7 and negative 1. Now that we know the roots, we can find the factors by basing it on x. Therefore, your factors would be x minus 7 and x plus 1. When answering questions such as these, try to state your answer in sentence form as a conclusion like this. I therefore conclude that the factors of f of x are x minus 7 and x plus 1. Now, let's see if you can do it on your own. Try looking for the rational roots of the polynomial. g of x equals x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. check to see if you got it right. The given polynomial has only one variation, x squared and negative x. This means it only has one positive rational root. Its negative form is negative x cubed plus x squared plus x minus 1. It has two variations, which means it can either have two or zero negative roots. The exponent of the leading term is 3. So, it has three roots. You may be thinking that this automatically means that there are no negative roots and that there are two irrational or imaginary roots. Now, if you were able to check both situations via the integral zeros theorem, you would know that the first situation is indeed correct and that your roots would be positive 1, negative 1, and negative 1. Yes, there are times when the roots of a polynomial repeat. 
your factors would be x plus 1 squared and x minus 1. Now to test if you really understood the lesson so far. Try to answer the following problems on a piece of paper. You have 3 minutes. f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4 and g of x equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. conclusions should be therefore the factors of f of x are x minus 2 and x minus 2 therefore the factors of g of x are x plus 1 x minus 1 and x plus 3 remember to listen to instructions as sometimes the answer being sought are the roots not the factors and there are some instances where only the maximum positive and or negative roots are the only quantities being sought. In such occurrences, these are some alternative conclusions. Roots. Therefore, the roots of f of x are positive 2 and positive 2. Therefore, the roots of g of x are negative 1, positive 1, and negative 3. Number of maximum roots. Therefore, f of x can only have a maximum of two positive roots and no negative roots. Therefore, g of x can only have up to one positive root and two negative roots. Here are some exercises to check your understanding. Look for the maximum number of roots for the following polynomials.
Look for the roots of the following polynomials. Look for the factors of the following polynomials. Thank you.
comes up, here are the answers. Thank you.